Hey everyone, this is Greg Tatum. I'm going to talk today about some matrices. And matrices are really useful in uh, 3D programming because they can represent a transformation that you can do on your data that you have so that you can make triangles and things fly across the screen. And I love making things fly across the screen. So hopefully this will help shed some light on um, kind of what can be a little bit of a mysterious aspect of the math that goes into it. Um, and this touch touches on linear algebra, but I'm going to give kind of more of the programmer angle of it and not dive too deep into the math. Um, and so for this scene, I have some magic functions um, that I'm not really going to explain. Uh, and then I'm going to have a few shortcuts here and then some values that I can, I can play around with. Uh, and I'm going to start out talking about the identity matrix. And I have a little playground here. So starting with the identity matrix, it represents a transformation that is itself. So if you multiply a matrix against a, a point, which I'm not going to explain how to do that, but just to think about it, uh, each of these ones in this diagonal can kind of represent a um, one of, part of your point. So this would be like the x value. This would be the y value, this would be the z, and we're dealing with three dimensions, but this is a four dimensional vector that we're multiplying against. So just kind of ignore this, this last one here. Uh, and so with this identity matrix, you can see that if you kind of multiply one times x and then one times y and one times z, at the end you get the same thing, and that's kind of what happens. And you can see this, this matrix is just uh, 16 values, um, the four by four um, matrix. And your 3D programs that you use typically will either give you that data as like a buffer, like a simple array, or have a whole class around it that has all kinds of functions to mess with it. But ultimately, it's just 16 values that um, are scalar values that represent something that you, um, some kind of transformation. So to start doing something with this, you need to multiply them together. So that's why I have this multiply function. This multiply function takes this, an array of values, and you can see I'm feeding it this translation matrix and identity matrix. So this multiply will take these two different steps and then add them, and put the, multiply them together so that you can kind of take a set of operations and then have one thing at the end of it. So if you remember I said it was kind of like you had this x, y, and uh, z values. Well, if you take this column right here, and put in, let's say, 50, and I save it and refresh, you can see that I've actually moved over this thing 50 values. If I do negative 50, it'll move it that way. If I do, let's say, uh, this is uh, y, so if I do 50 values this way, it'll move those. And if you notice, they moved in the opposite direction because one is positioning with CSS and one is using 3JS. Um, and if I do this a little bit more aggressively, like 250, you can see this is actually a cube that's over here, while this is just CSS. So I've said these are just values um, in a row. So if I, if I inspect this element right here, what you're going to find is this is actually a div. This is a div. And if I go up to this um, div that it's surrounding it, you can see I have a transform for a matrix 3D, and through those magic functions at the top, I've translated our values to um, a CSS transform. So matrices, you might think, oh, that's just something my graphics engine does. Um, well, you can actually use it in the browser and do kind of some funky things with it. And so that's the transformation and identity are probably the two easiest to start, um, start with. And that's where I'm going to end it um, for this video right here.